Okay, I think we're live. Michael, can you see the attendees up on the screen? Uh, yes, I can. How are we looking? Good. I can see Alison, Andre, Candice, Claire, Emma. Hey, Emma. Um, got Helen. Oh, gosh. Okay, I can't. Too many, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> They're all up too quickly. Fabulous. Okay, so I can't see the attendees because I have the presentation in the background. So, Michael, help me out with that. But hello to everyone who is joining us today for our drop-in webinar. We're super excited to get these rolling for this year and to have you spend your lunch hour with us. So, for those who don't know me, I'm Cherie Carlson. I have worked with ICD for coming up to 20 years, I think, and most recently um, I've been completely online. So I really love the online community and all the wonderful students we've, um, we've had and um, are still servicing at the moment. So with me today is Michael Olsa. Michael, Hi. tell us a bit about you. Hi, my name's Michael. Um, some of you know me through the um, course and others I'm probably new to you. Um, I've been with ICD now for about three years I'd say. Um, my background um, was cabinetry and joinery design and I now have my own um, interior design practice and I'm working on a few projects. Um, working on a um, hotel rooftop at the moment which is quite a fun one and a um, warehouse conversion down in Ultimo, which is actually out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Just down the road, actually. Um, so that keeps me busy um, on my other two days that I'm not with ICD. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, and just before we switch over to our special guest for today, Michael, do you want to just explain um, how the students are attending today and um, how they can ask questions? Yeah, no, so um, Lauren's going to do her um, presentation. We're just going to have a chat. It's quite informal, so um, there's um, questions that um, will prompt her, but um, along the way, if you, there's something that you guys want to ask, um, you can just use the Q&A box. So if you hover down the bottom of your screen, you can click the Q&A box and um, feel free to um, send through any questions. And um, when we come to question time, I'll um, note a few of them down and um, I'll address them with Lauren or any of us that um, you may address them to. Cool. Do you want to see, just do a little tester? Someone... Yeah, okay. Um, maybe, um, Emma, do you want to send through a little question through the Q&A box? Just give them a minute to work out the tech. <laughs> We're also recording today. So for anyone who's missed today's session or needs to um, pop out early, you will always be able to come back and, um, and have a watch of the full um, program. Right. So I just got... Um, um, a question from Emma. I'm going good. Thank you. And um, Rachel. Yep. Got it. Cool. Fantastic. All right. That means we're ready to go. And today we're super excited to have ex-student of ours and one of our all-time favourites um, come back after a year of being out in the big wide world all by herself. Um, and she's joining us to have a chat to you all about how she's found this last year and we'll talk a little bit about how she's found her studies and the exciting um, project she's on at the moment. So hi Lauren. Hello everyone, nice to be here. <laughs> Would you like to start off just perhaps giving everyone a bit of a background as to who you were and what you were doing I guess before you entered the world of interiors? Yes sure. So I've always been a passionate interiors addict and um, Probably about 20 odd years ago, I first studied with ISCD back in the Rocks campus where I did a um, certificate flooring colour and design, which I loved. And, um, and I did a colour consulting certificate as well. And I'd always planned that I would eventually have my own business at some point. But at that time, the timing wasn't right. And um, so it's just taken me a little bit longer, better late than never, to... Um, 
to do a diploma of interior design online. Um, and I've been working out in the business world in different, um, in different roles, working in marketing, national marketing for Toyota was my last role. Um, I've done all sorts of roles out there, including HR coordination and um, communications coordination. Um, but I guess it's been good in a lot because it's giving me um, some good business knowledge and, um, and then the timing just was right for me back in um, 2016 to start my diploma online and to start working towards creating my own business. Um, and we was, have, um, it's yeah. always lovely to hear because I think some students expect that coming to study interiors that everyone's already got all these interior skills, but we love that our students come from such a wide background of, um, of fields. So mm. hearing your background, you know, all of those skills, as you said, you can find ways to use them um, in your new ventures. So yeah. for us, it's really great to see our students who have strengths in maybe it was law or business, or even we get, you know, um, primary school teachers coming in because they found they love all the creative tasks and, you know, use some of that passion that they have, but bringing that into, you know, an interiors um, field. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to go on to, we wanted to ask you, how has your year been since um, graduation? So it felt like yesterday that you finished, but we know there's been a bit of time in between. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to just tell everyone what you've been up to, what happened when you finished, how did you feel? Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, it just seemed to happen all of a sudden. My final assessment was, you know, submitted and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I've finished. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> it was good. Um, two years, you know, a long time. You really become immersed in the course. Um, and then straight after, I just started to think straight away, I need to start looking for part-time work in the industry. Um, and that was my plan to just start working part time and then to start working on my building my business and my marketing and all of that sort of thing. And um, yeah, I was really lucky to go on the ISCD job board and straight away, the first time I looked, there was a job there for Tallowstone Australia who were looking for a showroom consultant to work in their Dank Street showroom at Waterloo. And so I jumped at that job <laughs> and I was really lucky. Um, it took them about six months to open the showroom um, and they didn't want me to leave. So I got <laughs> in touch with me. And um, during that time, I just spent my time focusing on um, getting my branding and website and everything else set up. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about Telestone, how they're different from the other stone companies out there? Sure. So a lot of people come into the showroom and they say, well, tell me about Telestone. <laughs> I haven't heard a lot. Um, there's a lot more happening now on social media. Um, but they are an engineered stone um, company and they're only fairly new in Australia. Our managing director, bought the stone to Australia back in 2016. We started off with the standard range and then, um, you know, just a few years later bought out uh, the big slab, 3200 by 1600, mm -hmm. um, in the Calicutta Lux and in the marble um, veins. So they are, a, how they're different, I guess, is they specialise in marble replication. Mm. And the colour's really pure. So, um, Yes, so that's how they're a bit different. That's a really big slab, which would be really great for big commercial projects and big yeah. island benches, because often everyone loves a big island bench, but you're limited to the size of the slab or um, you need to have a joint. So 3200 by 1600 is quite yeah. a big slab. Yeah, and you could use it elsewhere in the home as well if you yeah. didn't need it all in your kitchen. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Lauren, we do get asked, um, you know, quite often from our students while they're studying and then those particularly at, at the end, um, about what type of work should they be thinking about? Should they launch straight into, um, you know, their own business? Should, should they be tackling all the big 
commercial interior design companies or some people do really like the idea of starting off in a showroom. So how do you think the skills that you've picked up at Tallowstone so far have helped you in your own interiors business? I think it's really great from the point that you're starting to talk to people about helping them with their finishes. And so um, the idea with the Tallowstone showroom is they've called it the City Experience Centre. So they wanted it to be somewhere where um, end users, designers and architects could come to bring their clients. And we've got a sample wall. So we hold things like we've got Polytech samples, oh. um, tongue and groove samples, um, Cavalier Bremworth and some beautiful Di Lorenzo tiles. Mm -hmm. So you can come in as an end user or designer and bring your own samples with you and we can build up a story um, or you can use what's there available. And it's really great for, for that way, I guess, for me. I just love helping them pull that together, listening to um, their colour scheme and their, and what they their vision and then try to help them build a story and, um, you know, give them some samples and let them go away and have a think about it. But it's really encouraging, I guess, is the biggest thing is to talk to them, start talking to people and um, you really know that what you've learned is coming to life. Yeah, fantastic. Because we have um, students who have gone on to work in um, different material showrooms, paint companies, furniture showrooms as well, and they do um, feed back to us that it's been a really good step for them. Just for those perhaps that even, I, I think you had confidence on your side, but for those especially who you know, feel like they're just not confident enough to go out alone. It is a good, like, little landing zone for them to just, you know, really get the experience of um, actually working with clients and mm -hmm. also hearing their design language come mm -hmm. out. Did you find that at all, Lauren? Were you using yeah. the elements and principles as you yeah. spoke to you? <laughs> Yeah, and some of it you just you're amazed. You just look down and go, "Oh, I've just created this flat lay, and it actually looks really good." Yay. And designers come in and say, "Wow, well, who did did you do this? It looks amazing." And it just gives you encouragement, I guess. To yeah, and yeah. the thing is, as a designer, you can't be an expert in everything anyway. So it's really great to go to showrooms and speak to people like you who would have a lot larger knowledge than a lot of other, of other designers out there on the stones and mm. vice versa you know you then start speak to designers and you um, absorb a lot of their information their knowledge so it's this sharing of knowledge and then also then passing that on to clients and things like that who, who come into the showroom mm. that you know it starts to build your confidence and um, what you know within the industry for sure, I really enjoy talking to other designers about their business and how they how they manage it and yeah. the back end. And they mostly, I've found most are very happy to share. I found mm -hmm. it a very supportive industry in that regard um, because we all want each other to exceed and there's succeed and there's enough work for everyone. So yeah. yeah. No, we do say that too, to um, try and let you all know out there that um, the interiors industry is lovely and get out to events, get out to showrooms because um, it is a common fact that, that knowledge sharing, as you say, um, you know, is a great um, benefit of the industry and people are friendly and are willing to you know, really um, make a connection with you, even at a student when you're still a student. So we, you know, we really, really do enjoy that aspect um, of the industry. All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide because this is something that most people want to know about. Um, so working at Tallerstone, we thought you might be able to share with us a little, um, some little insights into what you see as the current, you know, directions in um, the colours or textures of the materials that you're um, seeing come through with designers and with your own product range? Yeah, so there's definitely um, a shift to uh, thinner bench tops and we've got a lot of uh, new stone coming out in 12 mil. Mm -hmm. um, so 20 and 12. Um, and also the different finishes, leather honed and matte finish is also becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. 
well. Um, plus, I think there might be a bit of a slow shift away from some of the grey tones more towards some more natural colouring. Mm. Yeah, so we were just talking about that. I'm just going to bring a couple of images up from your showroom. This is Lauren, is that correct? Uh, that's actually my colleague outside that window. Oh, there. Uh, She's our uh, marketing director. So yeah. uh, It's such a nice shot. And there you've got your materials up on the side there so they can grab them and yeah. lay them out. That's really lovely. And then we have this shot of you there. Yes. <laughs> Which looks great as well. So that timber panelling they've got is a nice contrast to really show the stones, um, mm. the it's stone render. That's um, Polytech Stecker wood. Ah, mm. gorgeous. And okay. That because it could curve around, we had a couple of structural poles, columns, so it was great to make a feature and to curve it around. Yeah, no, it looks fantastic. Mm. All right, next. Up. Upon graduating, then you had um, found your work with Tallow Stone, but you also started your own business. So perhaps you could tell us, you know, what happened inside you to take this step? Hmm. There was a few things. So um, I was working with um, Toyota in their national marketing department, as I mentioned, and um, they were actually moving all of their marketing office down to Melbourne. So we had an opportunity to either <laughs> uh, move to Melbourne and stay with the company or to get redundancies. Um, and so that's when I decided, well, this is the time that I need to now take this leap of faith and change direction and do something that I've always been passionate about. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, I, as I said, I studied, started studying years ago. So this is the time for me to do it. So um, I just took that step and um, then I started to um, set up my business um, last year. So, and doing that, I also did a renovation at, in my own home. So this is some of the images from my renovation. Yeah. I use some of the drawings um, that I did in my assessment for my kitchen. Um, I think they're coming up a bit later. We probably yeah, should have. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing about it was that I could use these drawings in my portfolio on my website. Um, so it was really key, I guess, at the time to use a professional photographer um, who just happened to also be um, a very talented graphic designer and um, she also worked with me on my branding, um, my website and um, then also we put together this portfolio on my website. So that was just really great. So I spent a bit of time while I was waiting for Tallowstone Showroom to open just focusing on those things. Mm -hmm. um, and also the business side um, of my of my business, so talking to some accountants and lawyers and getting contracts drawn up, getting the right insurance information, all the business side of things as well. And during that time, I did network with a couple of other interior designers who were established and just got their ideas on what I really needed to do. And um, that was really valuable. Excellent. Now I can see your little logo there and we know what you're called, but perhaps you can give your little elevator pitch to everyone else. <laughs> yeah, so I decided to call the company Natural Instinct Interiors. Um, I guess I just, I've always really liked really natural sort of paired back, um, sometimes bordering a little bit rustic and, um, you know, not too complicated. I like minimal, I like coastal. Um, Yes, it doesn't mean that I, that's the only thing I can do, but that's what I decided to do in my home. And it just flows cohesively through the whole home. So um, when we did our renovation, um, there was quite a bit of structural work to put that kitchen in, which was an eye-opener. <laughs> um, bit nail-biting too, but um, yeah, look, I think... I just brainstormed it and I did a bit of a mood board as well on how to set up my branding. Um, I just wanted to research other brands and then look at colour schemes and come up with a name that I thought worked and fitted with the image that I wanted to um, put forward. 
Yeah. What we've done, I think it might have come in a bit after or maybe it was near you in our um, design practice subject. We look at the branding and it is fairly on, early on in the course, um, but we do get students to do exactly what you said is to start with a mood board and really think about what it is that first of all, their own personal tastes, and then to be able to kind of amplify that out into how they might approach the market, what kind of clients, you know, that they think they would be after and think they would enjoy, you know, that that area to work mm -hmm. in. So um, yeah, that was very useful. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun because we always tell them, you just reminded me because some of them get a bit stressed because they think that they have to have that look and their branding done there and then, but it isn't often until you finish the course, you're learning so many different facets of interior design through the course. So it's quite hard to really have yeah. that, you know, sit back and really reflect on um, who you are and what your kind of style is to be able to use that in creating your brand. Yeah, so, yeah I, I used a different brand during my course. I think I just called myself LH Interior Design. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, but I did use that subject um, when I was doing my mood board at the end. Mm -hmm. um, again, I went and revisited what I'd done during the course. It was quite different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think Leah put in a really good activity in there called "Who Am I?" I think, and mm. that's a new one. Just you know, it sounds so simple, but it actually mm. is a really important one. Um, and to do it all the time too, something that, you know, for any students who have been out for a year or two years even to go through that process and just really think about, you know, as the years have passed, do you need to change? Is there, a, you know, a new direction you might be taking? So it's not to say that that's stuck for the rest of your life either. And you can't predict what, what angle you're going to take or what little road you're going to go down. You may all of a sudden come across a client that, you know, wants you to design a thing that may not perfectly align with your style but mm. then you realize oh, wow this is actually a strength of mine and you start mm. going down that path and that's yeah. you know one of the things that you'll find is that you know you have to be open to a lot of possibilities and um, once you're open to those possibilities you do find that you you carve your own path and mm. you know when you're creating your branding and things like that you never you get to what path you go to go down so having that flexibility is it's a good thing to have in the future as well yeah absolutely michael i'm seeing lots of flashes on my screen are you getting lots of questions coming through um i was just going to do a little reminder because we had about 30 people jump in after i um posted the q a okay. um, so just um at the bottom of your screen if you hover there's a little q a bar and along the way, if you uh, want to ask a question, just type it in there. And when it's question time, I'll um, sift through them all and um, answer some. And if there's a few that align, I'll try and join them all together. Great. Okay, because we're just going to get Lauren to delve in. She did such a beautiful job with her branding. We're just going to delve into the branding just a little bit more and then we'll um, go back more to her clients and her first job. So maybe after the branding bit, Michael, if there's any specific questions around that part, we could take a few questions and then keep keep going. How does that sound? Perfect. All right. Me if I'm not listening. <laughs> Okay, so Lauren, um, the next part of it was about your branding again. So we've put an um, image of your um, mood board up and just asking you again, you've kind of touched on this, but how important, um, um, what an important, how important is it to create or get that brand right, I suppose, and um, a little bit further on how you actually did choose that branding right um, after you did the mood boards, how you took it further and really, um, yeah. you know, refined <laughs> your ideas. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess I just really wanted to have a really clean and um, calm looking palette um, to go with my portfolio gallery. Um, and the idea was that eventually once I start, you know, getting um, full on projects, um, then I'd develop a project page for each one. And, you know, this this could evolve, um, but at the moment I just wanted it to be um, 
in this nice soft and light green palette um, that seems to work quite nicely across my web page at the moment and then we just used I just used that also on my social media when I set my social media up yeah I'm going to just make a comment on your color so I remember when you got into applied color I I'm sure I commented that here, here you go, you've got a good eye for this. Mm -hmm. And there's different parts of interiors that all our students, you know, show their strengths in, I suppose. But um, one particular one for you was the colour and just um, what a difference it makes when you have that colour play and that colour knowledge to be able to really pinpoint a colour as perfect as mm -hmm. that. Because, you know, a few tweaks off probably still would have been nice, but you know, when you get the exact right mix, it's, yeah. you know, it makes such a big difference. Yeah. So, yeah, beautiful. Well done. Now, you just mentioned your Instagram. So I'm just going to um, put a little flash up of your um, feed because we love your um, Instagram account. It's really beautifully designed. So perhaps maybe if you just um, give a few words about the importance of Instagram and your tricks in creating your account. Thank you. So um, initially I did get some help to set it up because it was quite overwhelming. <laughs> I realised that I didn't really know much about it and, um, you know, there's so much you can do as well. You can, on your website, you link th through to your Instagram page, you link it through to Facebook page and you can link it through to Pinterest as well. So I got some help um, to do that. And that was really beneficial. Just felt, you know, um, it took a lot of pressure off me. And we, we did it thoroughly. And um, I haven't looked back on just setting it all up, getting some help to do that. Um, but in terms of the feeds, um, initially, you know, I was coached to do uh, one or two and possibly three a day. Um, but well, I, <laughs> I just can't do that. I find that quite overwhelming and I don't have enough content to be doing that and I don't really want to start doing that much. Um, yeah. So I just try to post things that um, are relevant at the time and sometimes, you know, I have a bit of a theme um, that goes on for a few posts and it just depends what inspires me. At the moment, it's just, it's just whatever is inspiring me. I can, it might be something that drives it from um, creating um, a flat lay at tallow stone or um, just something that I've seen some other designer do and um, and get an idea of my own. Um, I get a lot of inspiration just searching through Pinterest, which is a fantastic tool. Yeah. Um, I can't say <laughs> you must have a Pinterest board. It's just fantastic. So, yeah, creating your own Pinterest boards is very important. Um, and I just try to make the feed look like, um, you know, use your um, elements and principles in design and um, try to make it aesthetically pleasing. Fantastic. Michael, I heard you before say hi, Emma. Was that Emma Stagoulis? Yeah. I think okay. That's... So if it was Emma, she was at the Life in Style last week and she took one of the free coaching sessions there. And I think this goes, you know, uh, some people will say to really pump up your Insta because it's just it's such a big platform at the moment. But then if you break that down a little bit and really think about your target market, perhaps your target market isn't as conscious of Instagram as they are perhaps of word of mouth if they had someone recommend you. So that's just, that was a really good um, piece of advice um, that Emma, she went on our boards and posted that to everyone. So um, yeah, that was a, you know, you've got lots to think about anyway. Yeah. Um, were there any questions, Michael, that we take a little quick pause and before we keep going? Yeah, there wasn't um, a lot about branding just yet. They're coming through now, but we had a few earlier on. Um, we've got two which I'll connect together about jobs um, and job prospects. One um, is about um, for our recent colour design graduate and um, what jobs you would recommend um, and something along the lines of um, um, property styling and if you need an interior design qualification if necessary. And... I'm happy to jump in, Lauren, if you can't answer all of those because some of them are quite specific. Yeah, so for the colour designer, um, I've, I've met a couple of other interior designers who've worked for companies like Dulux and Porter's Paints, 
to, uh, and they're happy to um, take on graduates um, to work actually porters mixing colours and coming up with different colours. So um, that could be an awesome job for a yeah. colour designer. Mm -hmm. um, colour consulting, I do a bit of that and um, I find that's really great uh, way to get your foot in the door with clients and then if you develop perhaps a little flyer about the other services you you offer um, it's a good way of you know getting getting that in front of the client as well yeah so we we normally um, tell our students our diploma course is the long course it goes over two years and the cert four in decoration is the shorter course which is one year so we normally say that if they're halfway through their diploma or they're at cert um, four level that um, finding avenues in colour design and also in property styling. So going out to your real estates, they're perfect roles for that level. So some of our students are taking on those roles as they study, which helps them, you know, brings a bit of extra income in, but also helps them because they're being exposed to then real life scenarios. Yeah. Michael, I think you were going to add on to property styling there. Yeah. I was just saying one thing that I found when um, I started, I'm, wasn't doing styling or anything like that, but I actually quite enjoyed the smaller jobs as well that you'd get, like the small design jobs, because you could really then start honing your craft a little bit, um, meeting people, um, and it's not as overwhelming. So starting of those small, in these questions, um, cases um, about colour and styling, you know, starting small, those smaller projects is a good way of building into then the bigger things. Yes, and that's what I was um, planning on doing. So I've created a few um, consultations in, in my services pages that help um, people, if they're happy to go out and do all the legwork on their project and they just need a second opinion, they've got my time, um, two hours of my time to just hit me up with any questions on colour, finishes, um, layout, anything. Can we just do a walk around? Or we look at what they've already got and um, and I just, yeah, work with them on that. And I find that's a really great way to just start mm -hmm. to get talking to people and not feel so overwhelmed with the large full renovation. <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's a great idea, Lauren. Um, which brings us into our next question. So we're talking about getting work. How did you feel when you got your first um, real job? I was so excited, <laughs> um, a little bit nervous, but luckily, um, oh look, we just hit it off, the client and I straight away. And um, it was one of those styling consultation jobs. And, and she had a beautiful eclectic style and she just needed some second opinions on, on some things, some colour, and she was doing a bit of a, a renovation too and she wanted my ideas on um, on the type of doors to put in there. Um, so we just brainstormed some of that and, and then I also, you know, um, introduced her to um, a painter and, and a um, builder. Um, but it was a really, really great experience and, and also I just felt that the information I was giving away during the consultation um, I felt that it was authentic and, um, you know, I just felt supported by all the tools that I'd picked up yeah. <laughs> in my, in my course and, and over years. So it felt really good. Yeah. Fabulous. And one thing you've learned that since, well, I'm sure you've learned a thousand things, but probably the main, probably the main thing that comes to mind is your biggest lesson learned from being out in industry as compared to being a student, I suppose. Yeah, I guess I've, I've learned that it's really important to to talk to people and to network um, and asking questions of other designers and, and try and build a bit of a tribe and and because um, you can be on your own doing this. <laughs> yeah. But if you can if you can connect with other like minded people and go to some events together and um, it's that's really supportive. And I found it really great. Um, there can be one of the first things that I got a bit surprised by. One, you know, the odd person might not be all that happy to share their experiences. You don't often get that, but but I did experience that once, and um, I was a bit surprised by it. Um, anyway, you know, you just move on and go. Yeah. Okay, 
that's fine. You don't have to share. And if you feel threatened, I'm sorry about that. You know, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a few um, brandy questions just quickly. Yeah. Um, um, Lauren, do you have a Facebook as well as an Instagram? Yes, I do. I link it um, through and I decide on each post whether I'm going to share it on Facebook. Yeah. I'm a little bit unsure whether I... I just get a lot of likes on Facebook, but not as many as Instagram. So it's not as mm. commonly used, I think, in this yeah. um, industry. Mm. Uh, but I think it might capture the attention of some people yeah. always on Instagram and you never know. Um, and I, you know, for, I've got a Facebook for business account and that's important because you need to be able to have the review section open and, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't done a great deal with that, but I hope as I start getting more reviews, it might be used. Yeah. And, um, how long did it take you to set up your branding? with um, the help that you got and everything like yeah. that from where to go? Um, probably took a couple of months from the start of the time we got the photos done and, um, yeah, did the brand guidelines and then did we did we built the website in Squarespace, which is actually quite good um, because I can now um, edit it myself. So as things change, because you need to be able to do that. Mm. as you move along because the services that I'm offering um, I decided they were great to start with but you never know as you said Michael you know I might end up going down a different path down the track so you need to be able to keep the website up to date absolutely mm. you could be like the Sydney Stone Queen everyone goes to Lauren Holmes <laughs> for <the> stone advice <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have this one up. I probably should have had this back with your kitchen, but um, yeah. these were the images when you were studying online of some of your Subject 12 work, I think it was. Uh, so this is subject, this your final Subject 16, I think. Yeah, this was probably one of the... I think this was in the rendering. Okay. I think this might have been one of the first rendering... Um, and I just loved learning how to use oh, Photoshop and all the little things you can do in with rendering. Um, now, I'm going to come back to your rendering, but why did you choose online? Because you, I met you when you came, you, well, you had been on campus and then you came in on in the early days. So it, we were accessible to you, but why, what, why did you do online and what, what do you see as the advantages? Yeah, so I do live quite a long way away from North Sydney um, and, I, and I was working full time at Toyota still and I just decided it's going to be much easier to do this online and to be able to be just um, independent of having to go to campus. Um, and, I, and I think it was really good to work to do online. You'd be, you become, I think you find your own design style. Mm -hmm. um, you can wow. you can often look at other students on the on the discussion boards and just go, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. <laughs> How am I ever going to do anything as good as that? <laughs> um, but you do, and you get you know inspired by what others do because there's some fantastic designers that went through at the same time as me, mm. um, and I just got so inspired by them. Mm. Um, but I think you because you're not in a classroom situation, I think you might find your own design style. Yeah. You, you can be influenced by others, but I think you, you're not, I think you come away from that and you just focus on what you need to do and then you find your own style. Yeah, we have, uh, because I worked, did face to face for so many years before I went to online, I found that is one of the advantages that you would think it's a funny advantage because you know that people want to have the, you know, students next to them so they feel like they're on track, but in, in online, you have the students around you on the discussion board, but you're not, um, you know, you're not kind of fenced in with a certain type of look. Sometimes if you're in the classroom, you kind of are all starting to become, you know, a certain, a certain look. Whereas we have students all around the globe now with online. So you're getting quite a lot of different mm -hmm. inspiration from different areas of the world that might not be doing exactly what we're doing in Sydney or, you know, Western Australia has their own style even. So even within Australia, we're, you know, really starting to see the different, um, you know, the different looks and feels. Mm -hmm. And so that I, I really do enjoy that 
um, with online um, as well. But what I want to ask you with your rendering, so notoriously the the digital subjects are the ones that people um, do fear, I suppose. Um, what were your tips when you hit the digital subjects, Lauren? Yeah, so um, I subscribe to lynda.com because um, I really just need, I mean, the tools and, and the handouts that are provided on the course are fantastic, but I just needed um, to be able to teach myself in another way as well. Yeah. And um, be able to plug into that at the same time as doing the activity and that's how I learnt it. Yeah. We always say our student, I think you have have you already told us about this, but the students that pick up Google, it's such a silly thing, but often you're so used to waiting to ask an educator something. Often if you're working late at night, a quick Google can keep you going. So students do find that yeah. Googling actually supports their learning um, as well. Yep. Google became my best friend and it's still, <laughs> every time I've got a question, <laughs> I'll just put it in Google. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've had a few questions about your um, your computer skills and on the technical side of things. And um, I probably from my perspective, looking at um, the students across the, the board, is that um, whether you have a lot of high um, technical ability or lower, you tend to find a middle ground and you find what um, you're comfortable in. And once you find a program that you feel a little bit comfortable in, mm -hmm. you start using that a little bit more than the others and then, then you come pro proficient in that. Yes. So, you know, we're not trying to teach you, um, you know, it's not a computer course. We're not teaching you how to come proficient in um, these programs, but we're kind of giving you a taste of a little bit of everything, teaching the tools of a little bit of everything, and then you can then take what you want from it and take that under your wing and say, okay, I really love the Adobe suite, I can do my drawings in here, I can present in there, or I really love PowerPoint. I can do my little annotations, I can do little diagrams, but then I hand sketch my other things. So um, you don't have to be whiz on computers, you just have to have um, an open mind and willingness to, okay, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but um, you know, I'll try it, give it a go. If I don't like it, I can drop it um, and try something else. Yeah, for sure. Mm. I think um, it develops your skills anyway. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. I think someone said Linda's now with LinkedIn, which I think it's true. Oh, thank you. We've got the... It's... We've got that in our course. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we probably talked about a few of the challenges, um, Lauren, but in terms of the challenges... Um, you faced we have we've touched on um photoshop and whatnot and then that in autocad as well and that you used um linda and google became your best friend so that's that's how you overcame those ones do you have any tips for design students before they graduate i'm just bringing up a bit more of your work too because i was a bit um it'd be really you know, I think, uh, and I didn't do it. And if I did, if I had my time again, I would probably focus more on trying to um, connect on discussion boards and even maybe just, um, you know, connect and network with some of the other students. So that because we're sharing a common, a common goal, and if you could go and meet with them or just have a catch up outside of the course, I think that would be really beneficial. Because you can feel like you're doing it all on your own, but you're not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then we're getting so um, our our community is growing at such a fast rate. So we, it's something that we need to kind of, I guess, um, encourage as much as we can as well to have um, you know any kind of. Um, community meetups. Michael and I just went to Life in Style last week and Emily in Melbourne is doing Den Fair in July. So we'll keep trying to be out there so anyone who's going to those events or whatnot can meet up. But also to meet themselves. We do have students in different areas who've, you know, who've gone ahead and done that and it is great. But um, even if you can't get out or you're really remote, as you say, the discussion boards, it, it does take time and I'm studying a different course at night and I feel terrible because I know I tell our students to do this, but to get on, because we do say the more you put in, the more you get out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. with this. And, um, 
Um, Lauren, you're saying how you're inspired by the other students' work and seeing that, you know, just jumping on and saying, wow, that render is amazing. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Mm -hmm. People are yep. more than happy to share the knowledge. It's like, I just added shadows. And it's like, mm -hmm. thanks. And little things like that, you may have taken you two weeks to learn how to add shadows, but a little comment um, within your little community um, yeah. and then you've worked it out pretty quickly. That's true. And that's what I probably needed to do more of. I mean, I did jump on and, and towards the end, I think I, I formed more um, connections and making comments with other, other students. But, um, you know, I often didn't feel like I could just, I wanted to ask them what they did. I guess I, I maybe felt like, oh, well, they might not want to give that information away. But um, I think you're right. I think I probably should have just maybe had a bit more confidence to ask the question and, um, you know, and then like in a classroom situation, you would do that naturally. You'd just say to someone, oh, look, how, how did you do that? You know, that's amazing. Yeah, because we do find, we see from above, we see everything that's happening. And when students get asked, they, they always are really happy to share those answers. So it is a nice thing to, um, to encourage. We have your last shot up here now, Lauren. So you've given us a great um, insight into what's been happening with you. Michael, um, I see the little discussion boards going here. Do you have some, maybe we've got time for just a couple of extra questions before we need yeah. to Yeah, um, so we've got um, a question about, um, We've got um, some career change art questions. So I'll try and um, pile them all together. So we've got a couple of people want to get part-time work in like a showroom. They're doing a career change and things like that. Did you feel any resistance or do you have any tips about that or where to go? Um, so where to go? Well, I guess initially I just looked on ICD and I was lucky. There was in that no issues there. But I... <laughs> also a whole stack of seek searches out there yeah. um, and indeed searches and I just created a whole lot of um, searches for you know part-time in the industry interior design architecture um, and there's a lot of stuff that does come up in showrooms furniture showrooms tiling showrooms yeah um, and and they probably um, you know being career change or uh, if you had experience in other um, fields before, you know, mm. use them as not negatives but positives. So, you know, I've met, you may have been in retail. Well, you know, moving to a showroom, think, you know, now I'm incorporating my design skills already on top of my um, communication skills and things yeah. like that. Mm. It's about focusing on your positive yeah. things that you can transfer across and focusing on those um, and just being passionate, I think, if that passion comes across in an interview, mm. um, that's very good. <laughs> yeah. um, we've also got a question probably to um, both of you as well. We've got um, a visual arts teacher who wants to consider what core skills for students interested in studying interior design straight from high school. Mm. Um, it's an interesting oh, one. Can you just say that again? This is my like little area of interest. Yeah, so she's so, a big arts teacher and she wants to advise her students. Yeah, who want to interested in um, studying interior design straight from high school. What are the core skills? Well, if they've done um, technology for their final subjects, they're going to be um, a step ahead because as I see the um, those departments in um, secondary schools at the moment are really doing a great job um, opening up those subjects and really getting a bit deeper into, they get taught the elements and principles really early on now. Um, they have their colour theory. So if they've got any of those basic foundations in design, that's um, a big step ahead for, for them. But um, at diploma level, we really do um, teach them um, from scratch anyhow. So studying online you really need self-motivation and some dedication and diligence i would say of before even the design eye kind of comes in so just to be you know really um focused on where you want to go we've had as michael knows and maybe as lauren has seen we have such a range of students and when they start they think they could never make it as an interior designer but they really put in a lot of work 
mm. and um, you know a lot of their own interest helps them grow and open up the world of interiors to them so we think it's never say never core mm. skills for year 12 probably just you know that willingness to um, willingness to get into design and also to be able to picture themselves as a designer probably will help propel them the best yeah and um, I've got a couple of questions as well. I'm um, trying to link them together about um, how you balance studying um, online work, um, life. Just how did that, how did you find that? Um, and any. <laughs> Sorry, was there a second part to that? <laughs> <laughs> Just your balance in general during study and if you had any tips um, that you found worked for you or um, something along those lines. Yeah, it is a bit of a juggle and, um, you know, some family members feel that they're being neglected when you have to shut the door and say, I need to study now. Um, but you just have to be really, you have to set up uh, specific times to lock yourself away when you've got to do some work because, as Cherie mentioned, you know, it is um, demanding and you do have to be highly motivated, but keep the end goal um, in focus. Mm -hmm. And just make sure you give yourself time um, out and have, you know, mm -hmm. have some fresh air and some exercise and, um, and you know, enlist some help from other family members because they know you're passionate, they know you want to get to the end of this course and it's not forever. Mm -hmm. um, and you know you can't do everything, so you need to share the love around. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's it that is a juggle. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, I do. I because we hear this a lot, and we totally understand that life always gets in the way. So setting those boundaries, because if you don't, every day there is something that'll come up that's more important than your study. Mm. Um, so you have to be quite strict about that. And just like take comfort in the fact that it becomes a routine. And once you've really set those boundaries and put it into your week, once it's a routine, it's not as hard at all. You've taken, you know, a big burden off just knowing that you're following that routine and time just kind of ticks along and also thank you for mentioning to take time out so this is a creative course so you should not feel guilty about going out to a new cafe that's opened or you know out into the garden to have a look at the new natives that have come out because all of that is offering you inspiration and that can actually accelerate the design process in lots of your skiing so and um we've had a lot of questions on um software again like um autocad drafting um, yep. um indesign and things like that um a lot of people are asking do you use them um are they necessary um how long did it take for you to learn etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah that's a good question um and and that's a question i still ask designers now if they're using these things or if they're getting other people to do it um so i think it was great during the course that i got to learn some of the adobe packages in design i really enjoyed using that um and uh, photoshop i loved autocad i found hard but it was good to learn um, and that's the one i really needed linda.com um, for because I found it's not as intuitive as something as such as SketchUp, mm -hmm. which I know you guys have now put into your course, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And I haven't used them out in the industry yet. And I, I thought about that and wondered, well, if I get a job that I need um, to do some detailed drawings in, mm -hmm. I think I will probably get someone who's really smashing hot good at it to do it. <laughs> And I will focus on the side of my business that I'm good at. So working with the client, I'm coming up with some design ideas and um, doing that side of it because I couldn't pass, I couldn't pass the charge on anyway for the amount of time it would take me to do all the drawings. Um, so I think you have to work out what you're good at in your business. Exactly. And it's good to learn them, and I think you use them in the course to do some really nice presentations. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can decide later where your skill set um, lies. Yeah. yeah. And also think about, like, even if you're not good at it, do you want to get good at it? Do you yeah. see it as part of the process you'd like to take on? Because I know Michael loves his mm. doing yeah. the... I don't love a lot of it, but I love little 
bits and pieces I love my SketchUp and those little programs which I, you know, really love working in, but and I love my illustrator, but other things I tend to steer away from. And I think, Sheree, you summed it up perfectly. Do you want to learn those things? Um, you know, I've got a lot of friends who work in interior design that simply don't use it and the employee got them a draftsman. So <laughs> it really depends on it, um, what direction you want to take. Um, and we had an industry breakfast where we invited a lot of industries, um, architecture firms, interior design firms, um, building companies last this time last year. And one of the biggest things they said when they're looking for new graduates is that they're looking for people with conceptual ideas and original ideas and basically a little bit being true to themselves. And I said, if we need them to learn a program, we can get them to learn a program. Like, of course, it'll, you know, you still have to have technical skills to get a job, but that wasn't on their top priority list. So, you know, don't have that as, oh, I need that, it's my priority. Have your priority as I want to be a designer and then I'm going to use all of these little resources around me to make this design happen and communicate it for my client. Mm. Great lot of info there. I think we're going to have to call it a day, Michael. It's marching towards yeah. two o'clock. I'm sure we could go on forever with questions, <laughs> but just going to have one of your little sketches up there yeah. to finish up. Now, in saying that with the drafting, our course with there's those skills, of course, we have to cover because it's an accredited course. So we have to give you some CAD skills and some drafting skills and um, um, the digital visual skills. Um, so that's, we try and cover, you know, as much as we can in the course to prepare you for um, life as an interior designer. So we have here, I think most of our audience today are probably already studying with us, but if you're not, we do do the Diploma of Interior Design and the Certificate 4 in Interior Deck online. And we do have short courses as well if you just wanted to test the waters um, in styling essentials, colour essentials and surface design essentials. So that's it from us today. And I might flip back to Lauren's little picture again. We're so pleased to have... Um, a conversation with you again, Lauren, and be able to, you know, really touch base as to where you're at. We're so, um, so proud of the work you did whilst in the course, and now equally as proud to see you go out there into the big wide world. So um, that's it from me. If you'd like to just say goodbye. Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much for supporting me. You've been fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so nice to come back and to be able to talk about my experience and happy to share it with other students who might be thinking about studying online or who are already doing that. And, um, yeah, so just thanks so much. Yeah. Awesome. Michael, do you want to say goodbye to everyone? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to our big crowd that came on today. We're really happy to see yeah. a great response. So we'll get busy now and make a recording so it's accessible yeah. for you. Some of you might not have lasted the full hour when you've got lots of things to do, but thanks so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone.